Hello everyone, happy Monday. Um, it's freezing right now. Um, today, where I'm at, negative two. <laughs> um, you're gonna probably see me making a lot of my videos in my vehicle or in my office because it's the only time that I get like five whole seconds to myself. So this is, I'm just gonna take advantage of the five minutes and this is what you're gonna get. So um, today I'm gonna talk about um, COVID. So we already know what's going on with the COVID. We are in October and we are seeing it ramp up again. It's all over the world and it just seems like it's skyrocketing. At least that's what the news says. Obviously, I think we all have a friend, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, son, husband, somebody who has had COVID at this point. And so as we all know, um, there's really no rhyme or reason with the COVID. Um, some people are asymptomatic, getting no symptoms at all. Some people are very symptomatic and obviously some have lost their lives. So, I mean, there's just no rhyme or reason. Obviously, it doesn't matter what age you are. So, it's just, it doesn't discriminate. You can be young, old, middle-aged, and the COVID will get you and it will affect you in different ways. And that's what we're all seeing right now. And so, um, I can tell you my own personal experience with COVID because we ended up getting it in August. And that's why I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So, so um, my husband ended up getting it first and then I got it and then my son got it. And so we were all kind of in like increments. So his started like on a Monday, like a Sunday, Monday, where he started feeling a little bit symptomatic and then the symptoms tended to get worse. Um, I did not start to become symptomatic until that Friday. Um, and so right there, you can see the space in between us. And then our son ended up getting it probably about four days after I got it. So that was kind of our experience. And so I just wanted to just touch base on our experience about it. Because again, everybody's is so different. Um, okay, so um, I'm not gonna get too much into my husband's. However, he is a very healthy man. He's in his 50s. He doesn't get a lot of colds and flus or anything like that. So he fought it like a champ. He got it. Um, it did not go into his chest. It started on like, uh, like I said, like on a Monday and it was just your normal cold and flu symptoms. So for him, it was just like a little bit of a stuffy nose, a little bit of a sore throat, a headache. Um, some diarrhea, like, so you're just normal flu symptoms. And then it did escalate kind of towards the middle of the week where he started to get that high fever, um, like just a little congestion, but nothing, like I said, that went into his chest and just really tired, fatigued, things like that. But his was from beginning to end seven days, literally. So, um, and then by day seven, he was feeling a lot better. He was back, you know, getting his energy back, back to moving around. He was really good overall. So, I mean, really impressive to kind of see how his body handled that. I ended up starting to feel symptomatic that Friday. And again, mine was kind of just started off with that runny nose, some sneezes, sore throat and stuff. Um, and I thought to myself too, I was just like, wow, I mean, maybe this is gonna be it, you know, um, just these mild symptoms. However, that didn't last very long for me. Um, within a couple days, I did start um, with that really high fever, you know, that one that goes right up into that 101, 102, 103 mark. And really there was nothing that could take it down. Tylenol, ibuprofen, I mean, it helped with symptoms. However, it did not help with to really lower the fever because I think your body is just has that fighting mechanism. So it was just fighting off the Corona um, virus. And so for me, I did better with just taking some Tylenol. Um, he took the ibuprofen Tylenol combination. And when we um, tested positive, the care providers also said that you could just take normal cold and flu medicines for that too. So talk to your provider and kind of see what they think. Everybody has kind of a different take on it. However, it sounds like you could have taken cold and flu medicines. We Neither one of us did. It, we were okay with just taking the, the Tylenol and the ibuprofen. Um, and there was really nothing else at that point in time because that was in August that they could have given us anything else. They were kind of like, hey, you're just going to have to just stay home and, you know, quarantine and try to keep yourself as comfortable and hydrated and just go from there. I mean, there's really nothing. It sounds like now they're kind of coming out with some newer things. So let's just hope and pray for that. Thank you, Jesus, for you know, the different medications that will help other people with this. Hope, well, we're hoping, it sounds like they're gonna be coming out here relatively soon. So, um, and so my experience was though with that high fever and then just a horrific headache, heaviness in the eyes, um, just like the sore throat, the body pains, really achy in the joints and the knees and the wrists and the, you know, everywhere. And so um, I lost my taste and smell. So I was a few days in and I was the first one to lose taste and smell. In fact, I was the only one in my house to lose taste and smell, which was crazy. 
I lost it for about a month, well, about six weeks, so a little over a month, so about a month and a couple weeks. I just got it back a few weeks ago, so that's exciting. Um, and so you, you never know, like, how much you take that for granted, you know, really. I mean, I didn't even know water had a taste, really, until I was like, oh, I can't taste anything. Everything was off. All I could taste was, like, a sugar. And then, like, one time when we were up in Yellowstone, like, a few, like about a month and a half ago, I smelled, like, the spring, so something potent. <laughs> Not the smells that you want to smell, okay? That's what I, that, that was my first smell back so um, but so I lost my smell and I lost my taste and then um, for me it took about two weeks maybe a little more than two weeks till I started to feel quite a bit better so mine lasted a little bit longer um, than Brian's and then my son ended up getting it and then he's young so he was 13 and he just it was a fast onset for him it was the aches the pains the high fever not feeling good a good few days of that by day four he was better. He was the body of babes. He was doing so good. So yeah, he was healthy and he was bouncing around. He was hungry again. His fever had like dropped. I mean, so he was doing so good. So like I said, 13 years old, back to going in about four days. But um, we were also spread out even though we were in the same household. So I know that I've talked to people right now who have loved ones who have the COVID and they're like, oh, they're great. They're feeling good and they're doing good. And hopefully that remains. Hopefully they will be asymptomatic or whatever, but I also know like we were so spread apart um, that it can be a few days before your loved ones actually start to show symptoms and stuff because at least that was our case. So, but I do pray for um, anybody who has it. Um, I pray that God will give you strength and I pray for healing in your body. Um, I know that that was the one thing that I did do. I did a lot of praying. I got with God and I was just like, you're gonna need to heal me and restore me. And by Jesus' stripes, I've been healed and made whole. And I really made sure to, to give that to him because I didn't want fear to come in and paralyze me. I mean, you had like, I had that one second where I was like, oh boy, this is what they closed the country down for. And this is how people are dying. And, and so, and knowing that it was in my body, it was in Brian's body, it was in my son's body. I mean, you do have that moment of like, oh, I hope my body knows what to do. God, you, you're the only one who can keep me healed and restore me and restore my health and stuff. So, I mean, just surrendering it all to him. And Another thing that I just absolutely refused to do when I had it was get online. I, I just wouldn't do it. I mean, I just, I knew that I couldn't do it because then I'd be feeding that fear and I would have gotten caught up in it. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, you get on there in the horror story. So I was just like, I'm not getting online. I'm not reading about any of it. I'm going to let my body do what it needs to do. I'm going to let God do what he needs to do. And that's exactly what I did. And it was kind of nice to see Brian kind of go through it before me, even though, like I said, he's healthy and I deal with more autoimmune like symptoms. I kind of was just to kind of see the progression and how it affected him and stuff. I do think that that helped. But also after we tested positive, you get these little pamphlets of stuff. Like if this happens, this happens, this happens, you know, go in immediately. I didn't even read through the pamphlet. <laughs> now I don't recommend that, okay? I'm not trying to be a rebel here. However, I just, for me, I just knew like, okay, you know, obviously there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can give to me. Obviously if I had trouble like breathing or whatever, I'm going to go to the hospital, you know, call 911. But other than that, I was just like, I can't feed this into my body because your body will believe whatever you tell it. It really genuinely will. And so I just focused on my body knows what to do. It's being healed. It's being restored. Um, like I said, you were so tired. I just slept most of the day. I mean, I couldn't even keep my eyes open if I wanted to, honestly, I was just so tired and your body's doing so much as it heals and stuff. Um, but I'm just happy to say that now, obviously we're in October. I'm feeling so much better. My son is as healthy as can be. And Brian is just doing really, really well. And I was talking to a healthcare provider here in town just recently, and I asked them the question. So I don't know, a lot of you may even have this question. And I said, what if you've had COVID and then you um, are by somebody else again, like who ends up getting COVID? So already you're supposed to have some immunity to it a little bit. I know you can get it again. They're saying they just don't know right now. Um, however, I said, and then all of a sudden say maybe your coworker gets it or maybe your family member gets it or, you know, whatever. Um, what is the protocol? And I felt like that was a really good question because we don't know. And the healthcare provider who was a health department official actually told me that right now, at least here where I'm from, they're doing like a 90 day type thing. Like, you know, I've called a grace period. So like you have about 90 days. I know give or take, because everyone's kind of saying something a little bit different, but here they said 90 days from the time that you um, tested positive until like whenever the 90 day period is up that they're fine with you not having to go get retested, not having to quarantine, not having to do anything like that. So as long as you're not symptomatic, you're not showing symptoms, they'll give you 90 days. And anything after the 90 day mark, 
um, if you've been exposed to somebody or obviously become symptomatic, then it's a good idea for you just to take the normal things again, just go get swabbed up the nose and do everything that you would originally do. So it's just like you kind of got a 90 day, hopefully grace period there, but uh, we are tiptoeing onto our 90 days. So um, in November, the beginning of November, because it was the beginning of August when we had it. So I'm like, oh no, just going back into the heart of the winter. But I mean, who knows? I would like to think that I was immune forever from it because I don't ever want it again, but you just, you never know. So I guess we just keep doing what we can do, right? We just keep washing our hands and wearing our masks when we can and just, you know, trying to stay out of big giant groups of people, which, you know, I, I work in the public, so that's kind of hard for me. You know, I worked through the whole entire quarantine. So, um, when it initially started, cause I'm a coffee shop owner and they considered us essential. And so I worked through the whole entire thing. Um, and I'm still out in the public and, you know, dealing with money and iPads and credit cards and people and stuff like that so um, I just I, I gotta put my my life in God's hands and just hope that he'll just put a hedge of protection around the coffee hut and around our family and you know um, same thing Brian he works at in a really busy area he's a retired fireman but now he works in an airport where there's a lot of people and stuff so you know and the world's kind of getting back to being open and people are just you know congregating together more so I just pray that everyone just stays healthy we do the best that we can do um for me it's just like get out there and just pray and know that if you got it there's a big mighty god and just hopefully he'll keep you healthy and whole and we just got to just trust in his plan though and so anybody who like i said has lost loved ones my heart and my just thoughts are going out to you right now um because i can't even imagine and you know just having it firsthand in my body knowing how it feels that just makes me just so sad and so sympathetic to you so god bless and hopefully this helps somebody and i hope that you have a great day bye